You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Unlike Borderlands 2, assault rifles were referred to as combat rifles in Borderlands 1. Also unlike Borderlands 2, combat rifles from Borderlands 1 could come in two different categories. The first category is the standard combat rifle, which is generally more accurate for precise shooting and is usually either a single shot or burst fire type weapon. The second category is the machine gun, which generally has a higher magazine size and higher fire rate and is usually fully automatic. Uh, while you can get some crossover between the two categories, usually combat rifles rifles fall in between one of the two. There are four unique, seven legendary, and two pearlescent combat rifles and machine guns in Borderlands 1, which brings us to a total of 13 unique combat rifles for Borderlands 1. Of the 13, I think that these nine are really the best of the bunch. Without further ado, these will be the top nine best machine guns, combat, and assault rifles that Borderlands 1 has to offer. Number nine, the Dahl Raven. The Raven is a legendary burst fire combat rifle from Dahl, and its special effect is a five round burst as opposed to the standard three round burst. You also get slightly improved recoil and stability. This five round burst effect comes from the unique Dahl Raven magazine accessory, which also slightly improves magazine size and affects minimum and maximum accuracy. The Raven can have a elemental multiplier anywhere between times two and times three, so you can see this weapon in all elements. In my opinion, the Raven is a pretty good and fairly standard burst fire combat rifle from Borderlands 1. As I've said previously, I definitely prefer burst fire combat rifles to the single shot variety, mostly because the DPS on burst fire rifles is much higher. At the same time, as far as the Doll Raven is concerned, I sort of feel like there are just better burst fire combat rifles out there for you to find, and I also think most people would prefer machine guns from other manufacturers as well. Then again, that may depend on your preferences and your character as well. Number 8, the Torg Bastard. Just so we're clear guys, that's bastard with an E as opposed to an A in between the T and R. I suppose we do have to stay PG-13 on YouTube. The Bastard's special effect is high damage output and high magazine size at the cost of higher recoil and lower accuracy. You'll find that the Bastard's effects come from the unique Torg Bastard Barrel, which significantly improves damage and magazine size, like we just said, while also increasing projectile spread and recoil. Now, in terms of damage potential, in some ways the Bastard is on par with some of the best combat rifles in Borderlands 1. However, the problem is that the Bastard's projectile spread and high recoil can make precise shooting very difficult. From my experience, there's a certain tendency with machine gun weapons like this to sort of spray bullets into an enemy's face, and with the Torg Bastard, you'll need to be closer than you might want to be in order to deal the highest damage possible thanks to that projectile spread. Now, cosmetically speaking, I think the Bastard is one of the better looking combat rifles in Borderlands 1. The black tactical look is really cool in my opinion, I just wish it was a little more accurate at medium to longer ranges, but it is what it is. Number 7, the TDR Guardian. If you've played Borderlands 2, there's a good chance you're familiar with the Avenger SMG from that game. That weapon was largely inspired by the large number of TDR legendaries from Borderlands 1 that had regenerating ammo, and those were the Savior SMG, the Protector Pistol, the Equalizer Revolver, the Defender Shotgun, and the Guardian Combat Rifle. Now, the Guardian's special effect is just ammo regeneration, and unlike the Avenger, the Guardian can spawn as either a single shot or burst fire version depending on the magazine. Now, the Guardian's special effects come from the unique TDR Guardian combat rifle body. Ultimately, I prefer this to the Avenger because of the fact that you can receive burst fire versions of the Guardian. While the Avenger has better overall stats, the lack of a burst fire version really hurts the Avenger in my opinion especially if you want something with really good DPS. It's worth mentioning that you may find some non-unique combat rifles that are actually better than the Guardian stat-wise. This is mostly because the Guardian simply adds ammo regeneration with its unique body piece, and you aren't really getting improved damage or anything like that. I recommend that you equip the Guardian outside of combat for the ammo regeneration alone. 
it's useful if you don't want to buy ammo all the time, and I really like it. Number six, the Vladoff Chopper. So I never thought I would say that I actually like the chopper from Borderlands 1. Is it impractical? Yes. But does it wreck enemies? Definitely. And in my opinion, it is way better than the chopper that we got for Borderlands 2. Now, the chopper special effect unloads the entire magazine as soon as you fire the weapon. You can interrupt this effect from happening by either performing a melee attack, reloading the gun, or by switching weapons. And I should also mention that the chopper fires four projectiles per shot at very high ammo cost. Now, the chopper special effects come from the unique chopper accessory, which significantly increases magazine size, fire rate, projectile count, and burst count. However, this has the negative effects of greatly increasing recoil, projectile spread, and ammo cost per shot. Something that I think is interesting about the chopper is that it can't come in any elements, and this is unlike the Borderlands 2 version, which can come in any element. Uh, if you manage to get this to drop from Motorhead in Borderlands 1, I think it's a gun that you're going to have some fun playing with. It is powerful, but it is impractical too. Number 5, the Hyperion Destroyer. Just like the Guardian and Raven before it, the Destroyer rewards players with an impressive amount of damage for precise critical hit shots. Sort of like and unlike the chopper, the destroyer's special effect is that it unloads the entire magazine while aiming down sights. This special effect comes from the unique Hyperion Destroyer Barrel, which provides improved minimum accuracy, slightly better damage, better zoom, and is more likely to have a higher elemental multiplier than other Hyperion combat rifles. If I were to pick a burst fire weapon for Lilith, I think the Destroyer would be my choice. This is thanks to Lilith's Phoenix skill because you can actually get the burst to go above the listed magazine capacity because you get a chance for your shots not to consume ammo. It's also worth mentioning that the Destroyer is really accurate while hip firing too. Uh, the accuracy on the Destroyer is quite impressive and is almost on par with the bitch SMG from Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2 to a certain extent. Like the Torg Bastard machine gun, I really like the look of the Hyperion Destroyer. The red weapon skin makes it look really tactical and cool in my opinion. Number 4, the Vladoff Revolution. The Vladoff Revolution is a pretty nice Vladoff machine gun. It's relatively accurate and is capable of a lot of damage output too. Now, the Revolution's special effect is large magazine size at the expense of decreased fire rate. And this special effect comes from the unique Vladoff Revolution magazine. And when compared to other similar non-unique magazines, you're getting improved magazine size and better recoil, but you're also getting lower fire rate and slightly higher reload times as well. Now, despite the decrease in fire rate and the higher reload speed, I actually really like the Revolution. Overall, it feels a little more solid and accurate to me in general. This is especially the case when you start comparing it to guns like the Torg Bastard machine gun. I guess in a certain way, it reminds me of Borderlands 2's Gorilla Assault Rifle, which was a non-unique assault rifle which dealt a little bit more damage and had slower fire rate than the standard Vladoff barreled assault rifles. Overall, I think it's worth it to be on the lookout for one of these things. The Revolution is a great machine gun. Number three, the SNS Munitions Draco. Now, you'll probably notice that the Draco doesn't display its name or rarity properly, and this is because of a glitch within the game that's yet to be fixed and will most likely not ever be fixed. Uh, if it were to display correctly, the red text should read, quote, Dragon's Fire. Now, the Draco special effect is relatively high elemental multiplier, uh, always fire elements, improved magazine, decreased recoil, better accuracy, and a high chance to trigger status effects. This special effect comes from the unique Draco accessory, which seems to decrease projectile spread and improve magazine size as well. It's possible that if you've played through Borderlands 1, you may have actually used this weapon without even realizing it. Uh, there are a couple ways to tell that you have a Draco. The first is that the Draco will always be made by SNS Munitions. It will only come in fire elements and with a times two elemental multiplier or higher. The second is the better solution, which is to look at the weapon accessory. Something that you'll notice is that the Draco accessory appears to be more cylindrical than the standard fire accessory that you see for other combat rifles. 
Keep in mind that the accessory for combat rifles is located under the weapon barrel where you might put your M79 grenade launcher. Now, keep an eye out for these. They are really nice combat rifles and they are guaranteed as really good fire combat rifles. Number two, the SNS Munitions Serpens. As I'm sure you guys have heard me say before, the Serpens is in my opinion one of, if not the best weapons that SNS Munitions produces. Like all of the other pearlescent weapons, you can only acquire it during the General Nox DLC. The Serpent's special effect is a times three to times four elemental multiplier, corrosive element only, along with improved magazine sized, decreased recoil, better damage, better accuracy, and improved chance to trigger status effects. Something that you'll also notice is that some of the projectiles travel in a quote unquote serpentine or snake-like pattern. You'll find this special effect comes from the unique Serpent's accessory, which also provides better damage than the Draco. The Serpent's is one of my favorite pearlescent weapons. Not only is it great for triggering the corrosive status effect, but it also deals an impressive amount of damage to enemies. The Serpent's is absolutely lethal up against the Crimson Lance, and really the only problem I foresee is that the Serpentine projectiles sometimes can be a little bit difficult to hit on targets. Uh, but even then, the Serpent's is fantastic and is definitely recommended by me. And finally, number one, the Atlas Ajax Spear slash Ogre Hybrid. Now, you've probably heard me or others online talk about the Ajax Ogre before. Uh, the Ajax Ogre is what is known as a hybrid weapon, which combines the unique weapon parts from two different weapons together. In the case of the Ajax Ogre, it combines the effects and abilities of both the Ajax Spear and Ogre combat rifles. More specifically, the Ajax Spear gets its effects from a barrel, while the Ogre is a legendary weapon accessory. Now, the Ajax Spear is known for having very good combat rifle parts, and these parts are usually the best of their class, while the Ogre is considered to be one of the better legendary accessories for combat rifles. When you combine both together, you easily get what might just be one of the most powerful weapons from Borderlands 1. Not only is the Ajax Ogre capable of high damage output, but it is very accurate, has very low recoil, and fairly high fire rate as well. And overall, this gun is phenomenal. While it's really rare, I recommend that you kill Ajax to see if you can get one. All right, guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and you know, let's see if we can get 800 likes. If we can't get 800 likes, no big deal. I'll be here tomorrow, but again, guys, like this video if you liked it. Take care, and I'll see y'all next time.